Hey guys, so welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time checking in, please click that subscribe button down below. And remember, likes go a long way to help support the channel. Everything's been kind of crazy this week as far as uh, some of the Harley Davidson news. Because of some of the European Union uh, tariffs, everything has kind of gone nuts this week. And it's all in response to uh, the Donald Trump uh, tariffs that were placed on the uh, importation of steel and aluminum. So the European Union came back and kind of smacked back and said, that's fine, any of your manufactured uh, products that you're exporting to the European Union is also going to have tariffs. And it's something crazy like 30% or something. And this is all uh, part of the, the trade wars and all that stuff. And I, I thought it was kind of interesting. I, I, I watched a lot of Matt Laidlaw's videos and uh, last night he put out uh, a status saying he had posted a video and then he took it down because of uh, some of the political, I guess, hate that he had. Uh, I, I don't know, just a, a lot, I guess, the negativity that comes up on the channels. And part of that is, is just going to happen on, on social media and, you know, YouTube in general. If you're putting out videos, uh, you're going to get some of that, uh, regardless of whether your channel is political or not. Uh, but, you know, I understand why he pulled it down. He ultimately put uh, put it back up today, and, and I'll link in the description down below to that video of his opinion about Harley-Davidson and, and uh, kind of what's happening in the state of, I guess, just the economics of Harley. It's something that even kind of got me a little bit frustrated yesterday. I'm like, ah, oh, it sucks. Harley's moving uh, their production overseas. Uh, but when you start looking at it at, at the bigger scale and, and kind of, divorce yourself of that first initial emotion of yeah, got a hair in my mouth but you have to kind of divorce yourself of that first uh, initial emotion of like well that really sucks, I'm like oh fucking Harley uh, but you start to look at it and, and you know Matt Laidlaw is, is 100% right but really what it boils down to is even like GM and Ford and I don't know, any American manufacturer that has a presence overseas, they, they manufacture overseas. When you start putting stuff on ships, and especially when you talk about size of things, like, yeah, a bike is, is a good size thing to ship. Cars are even bigger. They start putting them on ships and moving them. It, it, it costs a fortune not only just to move the products, but then once it gets into the port of whatever country it goes to, now you're paying tariffs and like it just it economically makes no sense for a company to start you know doing this or they're shipping their, their products overseas just just to have uh, a uh, the jobs here because ultimately what it boils down to is like yes it's awesome to have a guy turning a wrench uh, in Milwaukee putting these things together that is is awesome but well, nobody's going to dispute that they want that to be the case but. That guy turning wrenches in Milwaukee isn't going to have a job if they can't sell the bikes overseas anyway. So it's, it's really just kind of a stupid mentality to like get really mad about that stuff. Uh, it, and I say stupid, I got mad about it. So like, it, yeah, it, 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 it takes a minute to kind of think about it and go like, yeah, I guess it makes sense. So when it no longer becomes viable to not only make the bikes sell them, but to make a profit doing it. Harley Davidson's in, a, in the business of making a profit. If they can't make a profit, they're no longer in business, we no longer have Harley Davidson. It's really that simple. I'm not some like economic guru, but I'm smart enough to understand that if the company can't do something and make a profit doing it, they're not going to do it for charity. So, ultimately, if the motor company has to switch uh, to manufacturing these things overseas, to sell a quarter of their bikes, uh, you know, which basically is what it boils down to, is like a quarter of their bikes, uh, their market is, is overseas market. Um, they have to do that to keep selling bikes here in the States, and so be it. And, you know, Indian conveniently came out and posted a, a video about basically, you know, our bikes are, are still made in the U.S. and they'll always be made in the U.S., but Indian doesn't have those overseas sales. So, it's easy for them to uh, continue making those bikes uh, in the U.S. because that's basically their entire market. Now, if Indian had to start uh, making bikes and, and selling them overseas, 
uh, you bet your ass that they are going to do exactly what Harley is doing. They have to compete. My point is that, y yes, everything that, that, that is America made, I am like the biggest supporter of, I think that policies should be in place to embrace the made in the U.S. thing. Um, you know, I think that um, if we can make America stronger by producing things in the U.S., then that's more power to us, and, and, and it, uh, it, hurts, it, it only helps our American workers. And more American workers means we're buying more stuff, and we're buying more stuff. The economy does good for that. So, um, you know, I'm not going to sit here and, and get into what I personally feel politically about uh, the policies that are in place. Um, I am going to say that I think that uh, for, you know, Donald Trump to be throwing stones at a specific company um, from the White House, you know, I, I don't know, I, I look at it like Matt Laidlaw kind of in the same, the same light, is that first of all, a lot of the things that the stones that are being thrown are, are really incorrect. Um, you know, there, there hardly is not... Hurley is not and has not uh, stated that they're going to be building bikes overseas and importing them into the U.S. for sales. So, uh, I, I don't really understand why that is misunderstood and why the president is almost conveying that that's the case because it's just simply not true. Um, I think Harley is smarter than that. I think Harley completely understands that their bikes uh, made overseas to be imported into the U.S. would be like the uh, anti their entire brand and I don't think they're that stupid to do that. Guys, I, I, here's the deal. <laughs> I just, I just guys you like Matt Laidlaw, but uh, here's the deal. If Harley can't make it sell bikes overseas uh, to stay competitive without their customer base totally going bad crazy. Um, I think that speaks more volumes of their customer base uh, than it does to the motor company themselves. Why are you going to alienate your, your overseas market to be like, we're American made and skew to the overseas market in the midst of uh, this basically trade war? Uh, yeah, I don't know, it's kind of dumb. Why not build your brands overseas? And if that means, you know, building factories and making these bikes overseas to stay in those markets, it's, you're just increasing your brand awareness. You're selling bikes at a competitive price point, And ultimately, that is strengthening your brand here in the U.S. So, uh, by abandoning any market, whatever, it's just stupid. So. Everybody who thinks that Harley is abandoning their, their, their market here in the U.S. when sales have been sliding in general on bikes over the last, I don't know, decade, uh, as millennials grow into it, they're, they're losing a huge portion of, of their uh, uh, sales in general to not encourage them to do whatever it takes to keep selling bikes. Uh, until they get sales to pick back up again, or if they don't pick back up, they're going to need those sales to subsidize the brand. So, uh, I don't know, all these loyalists and, and, you know, redneck American, keep America strong, and I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with that. What I'm saying is that there's something wrong with getting pissed about opening an overseas uh, uh, division, basically, to build and sell your bike. So, I just, I don't know, I kind of wanted to chime in on it and say, like, I was initially kind of pissed about it, uh, but after you think about it, kind of realize just the state of, of really everything in general, um, and their ability to sell bikes overseas and stay competitive in every market, it requires doing these kinds of things. Again, the auto industry does it, uh, really every industry does it, uh, so to think that the motor company should do something different and then expect them to stay viable is, is just just dumb. So I didn't want to get super political with this. And that's not my intention, really not my intention with the channel. Uh, I just kind of wanted to put out my two cents on the whole topic and say that, um, you know, I don't know. I think that the old overall backlash really driven by uh, the president, who I ultimately don't think is doing a super terrible job 
aside from doing stupid shit like that. Um, you know, I, I don't know, I think the backlash is really unwarranted and, uh, and, and, and ultimately whatever makes the company as a whole uh, stronger to be able to continue producing these bikes at a competitive price is ultimately what I want to see happen uh, in the long run so that I can buy my 2020 or 2025 model of this bike. So that's kind of my two cents on the whole topic. Leave your comments down below. You know, I'm kind of just shooting off the cuff here. Uh, but leave your comments down below. Let me know what you think. 